Hey folks, Mackenzie Lambert here, joined by my good friend John Cleveland. Hi everybody. Uh, this is going to be What a Year, and we're going to go back to the year 2008. <laughs> In the year 2008. <laughs> Alright, so uh, overall, n not a bad year, but actually, you know what, I gotta say a really good year for comic book movies. Yeah, there's a lot, I mean, there's yeah. a decent amount of really good movies out here. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm. I'll go ahead and I'll take a dive first with oh, mine. Sure, sure. Uh, first, my honorable mentions: Leatherheads, uh, starring George Clooney and John Krasinski of The Office, a decent screwball comedy romance. Yeah, it's not surprising you like that movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Resident Evil: Degeneration. Now, these are. This is separate from the Paul W. S. Anderson franchise. These are the animated, Capcom right? produced uh, animated, right? Yep, yep, yeah. computer animated movies, which are. In the continuity of the games, so that's part of the reason why I enjoy these more, and it's, there's not that feel of nepotism that you have from Paul W.S. Anderson, and which, but good action, uh, if, if you're a fan of video games, these are the ones you really want to give your attention to. Sure. Uh, next I will mention Midnight Meat Train, which is just a crazy gonzo, urban horror slasher, Clive Barker inspired horror movie. Yeah, it's a weird one. Yeah, Vinny Jones is like a uh, speechless murderer, which it's like, okay, he's yeah. got the look for it. Yeah, that's just, it's a Bradley Cooper vehicle. A very early Bradley Cooper yeah. vehicle, too. Yeah. Uh, and my last honorable mention is Sex Drive, which is a comedy that was funnier than it had any right to be. This is James Mars. Uh, I forget who was Cyclops, Jason or James Marsden, but uh, yeah, it's James. Yeah, uh, and then you got also a bunch of other teen actors. You got Seth Green. It's it's a, it's a throwback to the '80s sex comedies, and you know what? It was actually pretty good. Fair. Mm -hmm. Fair. Never didn't see that one. All right, now for my main ten. Uh, sure. This one's going to be a bit of a surprise. It's 1968 Tunnel Rats uh, from director Uwe Boll. Uh, yes, he's done horrible video game based movies, but once you he gets away from the video game based movies. He does halfway decent stuff, and this is a this is a movie where you're basically watching the Tunnel Rats, which was not you know one of the, the most enviable positions in Vietnam. This is where they had to go into the Viet, the Viet Cong tunnels underground. Yeah, so it's it does have some good suspense. It does have some good claustrophobic cinematography. I'm just surprised it's like for me. I'm not saying he can't make a good film. I'm mm -hmm. just more surprised that you think it's the ten bent film that mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Uh, my number nine is the Get Smart uh, with uh, <clears throat> uh, with uh, Anne Hathaway and Steve Carell, which I thought was a, a funny spy and actually a decent adaptation of the TV show. Uh, Carell, I was very happy he pit, his career pivoted away <laughs> from being a buffoon. <laughs> it got real old real quick. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, number eight, Speed Racer from the Wachowski sisters. Yeah, not surprised. Yeah, you didn't have yep. at all. Uh, number seven, 21. Uh, this is where you have the uh, college students who are involved in card counting. Uh, and they try yeah. to rob the Las Vegas casinos. Yeah, based on like a true story. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Unfortunate casting. Unfor yeah. Uh, number six, Tropic Thunder. Uh, just because, Fantastic. yes, just because of Robert Downey Jr. He's like the highlight of that movie. I think I re that. I think a lot of people are doing a lot of really good work in that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And I'm not the biggest Ben Stiller fan, but he does a really good job with this. No, he does great. Like, every, literally everyone has their moment to shine. Like Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Yeah. Oh God, Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, my number five, uh, Iron Man from Jon Favreau with Robert Downey Jr. No, no argument. No argument there. Uh, now, some people might take offense for it being this low. Well, number four being low. The Dark Knight from Christopher Nolan with Christian Bale and uh, Michael Caine. I'm, I'm yeah. a, I prefer Batman Begins over the Dark Knight. Same personally. here, same here. Yep. Um, I mean, it's a great movie, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but it's got flaws that people seem to ignore. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's an honorable mention mm -hmm. on my list. So. Uh, number three, Taken, the movie that basically made Liam Neeson a meme. You're just literally in order labeling my honorable mention. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. But, you know, I mean, Taken was great. Mm -hmm. Taken's also one that's like, what year did it really come out? Because it came out like three years yeah. before in France. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> Uh, my number two is Darren Aronofsky's The Wrestler, and as someone who grew up with wrestling in the 80s, this really resonated with oh, me. Oh yeah, no. It's still probably the best wrestling movie ever made. Mm -hmm. And my number one, uh, this is a documentary. Uh, this is The Wrecking Crew, uh, which is a, a documentary that looks at the Capitol uh, Records house band from the 50s and 60s. They were known as The Wrecking Crew. 
a uh, bunch of musicians who worked with some of the greats, whether it was Sonny and Cher, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin. Uh, they were basically the man that were the monkeys before the monkeys decided they wanted to be a real band. Oh. And so it's just them going through the paces of working on television, commercial music, and just how these guys have uh, such an amazing longevity. They would work with Frank Zappa. They'd work with a bunch of other different groups. So it's like they were the band. They were like the premier house band on the West Coast. Very similar to how you had Booker T and the MGs in the Southeast. So it's, it's just a study of how music changed, but these guys were able to adapt to the change. Sure, sure unsung heroes or lost lost figures in the music industry yes yeah. yep exactly all right so those were my picks for 2008 uh, right. John, well, let's go ahead and check out your list all right i have a lot of honorable mentions 2008 had 10,493 10, total movies according to imdb <laughs> and i went through all of them oh boy so i'm gonna speed run lightning round as you might say <laughs> some <laughs> of these <laughs> yeah all right so honorable mentions the Dark Knight, Iron Man, Tropic Thunder, Taken, Step Brothers, Wally, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, The Hurt Locker, The Incredible Hulk, Let the Right One In, Gran Torino, Quantum of Solace, Bronson, Rambo, The Wrestler, Ip Man, or Ip Man, uh, Zack and Mary Make a Porno, Semi Pro, Dead Girl, The Love Guru, Pontypool, Diary of a Nymphomaniac, The Good, The Bad, and The Weird, mm. Man on the Wire. Be Kind Rewind, The Burrs, JCVD, Ghost in the Shell 2.0, The Vian and Burge, and mm. CJ7, which is one of the most depressing films I've ever seen. Okay. There's also a bunch of bad movies. <laughs> and I gotta name some bad movies. So Lightning Round 2.0. <laughs> Wanted. Mm -hmm. Far Cry, Hellboy 2 and the Golden Army, shut up, it's not good. The <laughs> Happening, don't even argue. Death Race, the remake. The Spirit, Zombie Strippers, which is way more fun than it has any right to be. Mm. Bangkok Dangerous, yes, it has Nicolas Cage. Cage. Yep. Babylon AD, you forgot about that, didn't you? <laughs> Mutant Chronicles, Thanks Killing, Arn, colon, The Kingdom at the End of the Wor Road, which, by the way, is a very long movie. The Machine Girl in Tokyo Gore Police. Now, with all that said, mm -hmm. I'm going to just now move on to my top ten, which I will elaborate a little bit more on than the rush round. Mm -hmm. So anyway, number ten, in one that I am you have not seen, or I do not accept it's not in your top ten. Okay. Waltz the Bashir. I haven't seen the it. The single greatest war film ever made. Okay. Period, end of sentence. There is no war film or film about war that is even in the same category as this film because it was it's about the trauma of both how war affects the individual the main character mm -hmm. cuz it's functionally just a documentary of a man finding traumatic lost memories in real time and it's so good it's also one of the best animated things i've ever seen oh it's animated okay uh, yes all right. So I'm, I'm a little more intrigued to check it out then. Yeah, so Walk with Sheer number 10. Number 9, Sauna. Uh, it's a Finnish, I think. I do tend to mix the Scandinavian mm -hmm. countries up a little bit too much. Okay. But uh, it's a Scandinavian horror film or Finnish horror film. Um, the premise just being that it's after the uh, a war with Russia... Okay. And they have, uh, they're basically make, they, the survey teams. Each country sent survey teams and like, hey, this big patch, we don't know who it belongs to. You two have to figure it out. So if like, this swamp is in Russia. This swamp's in Finland. You know, that kind of thing. Back and forth. Um, and, we're, you know, that's just the rule. And in the middle of random woods, they find a village who it doesn't, neither of them have any kind of, uh, any previous record of. And things are a little weird. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Slow burn. Very slow burn. Don't expect a lot of violence. Don't expect a lot of, like, gore and action. That's not what it's here. This is a slow burn about trauma. Seems to be, a, so far, a, mm -hmm. a, a bit of a, a repetitive thing going on here. Number eight, to completely throw that askew, <laughs> Mad Money, which is a comedy <laughs> heist movie. Yeah, Elizabeth, uh, no, Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes, yeah. which, by the way, this is the movie that she didn't return to The Dark Knight because she wanted to make this movie. Okay. Which, 
I don't think it was a smart career decision, but I like I love Maggie Gyllenhaal in yeah. The Dark Knight, so I mean, like, mm, I don't care. But like, it's just a fun movie. A lot of women. It's a predominantly yeah, female Diane cast. Yeah, Diane Keaton also. Yep. yep. Uh, Queen Latifah. Uh, it's a great cast, and it's it's one of those fun heist movies where you're like, you think you figured it out, and then you figure they figured it out like mm-hmm. beyond that. So, and I always love those things. It's just a it's a fun movie. It's supposedly based on somewhat of a true story, but. The numbers they're throwing around make it seem like maybe not that's <laughs> true, but who knows. So, again, just fun. Yeah. Number seven, on the same route, just fun, role models. Okay. Me and my friends went to a con. The thing I can remember about the con is the hotel that night, they had like some movies you could rent and DVDs, players in the, in the rooms. We borrowed role models, and that's, we watched like four times in a row. <laughs> that was my favorite thing about the entire con experience. All right. Was just watching that movie. It's just a dumb, fun movie where um, Stifler... John Patrick, um, whatever his yeah. name is. John Patrick Scott or whatever. So, yeah. And um, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. And this is pre Paul Rudd becoming the internet's favorite person. Yeah. Um, both end up with um, community service they have to, 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 to deal yeah. with. One of the kids is McLovin, I believe. Yep. Yeah. And so they work at a child because of the history or whatever. They work with children, uh, an outreach thing for kids who need friends. And the one guy, the reason it's called Role Models is not only it's a role model program, but then also the one kid is McLo- that he gets assigned mm-hmm. to has no friends. He's McLovin from uh, Superbad. Yep. And he's a LARPer. And so they end up getting wrapped into that world, and it's hilarious. Highly suggest that. Highly suggest that. Okay. Number six. And we're going to flip it immediately back to being, okay, we're serious now. <laughs> Lake Mungo. All right. Which is yep. one of the, if not the greatest found footage film ever made, in my opinion. It's also one of my favorite horror films. It is, let's just say it's one of those where, like, this girl thinks that it's, I'm trying to be, I have to be vague about some things. A girl uh, thinks that her house might be haunted for reasons that mm-hmm. make sense. And th- it's one of those where, like, but everything is very it could just be in her head and you're never sure if it's if it, this is if she's seeing things that aren't there until you rewatch it for about the third time and then you're going to start changing your mind or are you is the best way to explain like with, I cannot tell you more okay. or it ruins things about the movie like I highly if you're a horror fan you need to watch Lake Mungo <laughs> it does not matter if you like found footage or not it it'll make sense, and that like they they don't do the stupid thing and never explain why this person's holding a camera at all times. It will make sense at pretty much I think at all times. Okay. So great, great film. Highly suggest. Uh, on that same note mm-hmm. of let's keep things somber and intense. Uh, Martyrs. Oof. Martyrs is two different films that are one f- like there there's a narrative that happens and then it changes in the middle and it becomes a lot darker and it was already pretty dark Mm. uh do not watch first off martyrs does have an american remake don't watch it watch the original with that said have a strong stomach Mm. if you do not like gore but not like i'm just gonna i'm gonna walk into a room and like gut a person and they're gonna be blood everywhere no this is not that kind of gore film like gore yeah. yeah Like, this is the kind of gore that, like, I bet that looks like it actually does hurt, kind mm-hmm. of. Like, th- this is an intense film, but it's also a film that's going to ask some intense questions about things. So, this isn't just dumb horror f- or horror or pain and torture porn. This is not that. This is a well-made film that goes there. Mm-hmm. Something to think about. So, that's an intense one. All right. Number four, uh, again, taking a different turn. Still very dramatic, but not... Gory or anything like that. Frost Nixon. Okay. Which is one of the most best, like, I don't want to say um, monologue heavy movies, but it's, it's a, just, it's a yeah, dialogue it's just film. the two of them, but pretty much the whole time. Pretty it's, much the yeah. whole time. Not exactly, but pretty much the whole time. The fake, it's based on a true story. It's basically after the whole Nixon, you know, Watergate thing yeah, came out. There Frank, was a. Frank Langella's Nixon, really, really good. Fantastic. Yes. One of the best performances of his career. Mm-hmm. Um,. But, uh, and, uh, the, who plays Frost? I can't think of his name. 
Oh, he's a very famous actor. Yeah, I, I know. I know exactly who you're thinking of. He's like been in Twilight, and although it's not saying much, but he's a yeah, really, really good. He's really like, hope American never... Gods is some of the recent stuff he's been. Yeah, in. So, so, so yeah. Sean, no. Anyway. Anyway, yeah, but. Uh, no, fantastic film uh, taken from the standpoint that after Nixon resigned, there was talk that he was going to do an interview, and kind of do the whole. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. you know, I've let the people, and he never did, obviously. No. But this is taken the standpoint. What if he did? Yeah. And this is the, if the president does it, it's not illegal, which is... Yeah, this is a very important yes. film now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because the lesson didn't get learned, I guess. Yep. All right, top three. And the only reason that these are top three is I genuinely... Well, number one is not an arguable point. Like, I will die on the hill of this mm-hmm. being the best film made that year. The other two, the three and two, however, I just like them more, mm-hmm. per se. Number three, one of my favorite horror films of all time, because it, so is Martyrs in Lake Mungo is Splinter. Mm. It's a great body mm-hmm. horror film. Great, you know, just, I don't even want to go too much further than that. No, but and it's a... Creatures, a creature in a bottle, in the, or a movie in a bottle, mm-hmm. in the fact that, spoiler, there's a creature, but uh, people, small amount of people stuck in one location. And it's great indie horror, and with the recent success of Terrifier 3, and you want to learn, you want to check out some more great indie horror, this is another one to go, this is a good one to go to. Yeah, it's not going to be as gory as no. Terrifier 3, but it's also better written. Yeah. Um, uh, like Terrifier 3, don't get me wrong, but it's, but if you want it's that, a like, spectacle, it's not a film. But if you want that, like, you know, we're going to film whatever the heck we want, so we're not worried about appeasing like a major studio, yeah. then yeah. Yeah. So, great, again, just great horror film. Mm -hmm. Uh, Number two, uh, a fun gore film. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say horror. Repo, the genetic opera. (laughs) Technically a musical. Yeah. Um, So, and it has, it's an opera, so they're, they gotta get used to that. But great songs, uh, good gore, fun story. And oddly enough, it was remade into that Jared Leto, Jude Law, Jude Law, Law, Forrest Forrest Whitaker Whitaker movie. Yeah. The premise is the same. It is the future people can get organs harvested and basically the loans out for new organs and stuff because the culture has shifted where mm-hmm. now you're you're nothing unless you've got a brand new heart yeah you know that kind of bullshit mm-hmm. it's a it's a it's a it's a fictional world it's very cartoonish and over the top I, again it's a musical so that but like uh it's a fun movie it's a lot of fun i've watched it a lot of it's just yeah paul servino oh my god like yeah i, I mean I, 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 I knew we could sing, yeah. but like, uh, I mean, Paris Hilton's in it too. It's a weird cast. And one of her actually, and one of the top performances of hers that I can actually sit through. Well, it's because her character is supposed to be an obnoxious, rich, yeah, woman who I just <laughs> chose much, to use the word stretch. woman, yeah, um, who's obsessed with her uh, her appearance. Mm-hmm. Like, if anything, it's beautifully meta. And the lead actress is the little girl from the Spy Kids movies, which is yes. like I can't process. Yes, that, the little girl but... from the Spy Kids movies, and. Uh, uh, who else is in this? Uh, Joan Jett's in this for a little bit. Not She's the person a, I was thinking, but yeah. yes, it is Joan Jett. Mm-hmm. Oh, Bill Mosley's in this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. So if you're if you like anybody who we just named, you should check this out. Or if, let's be honest, if you're a fan of Rocky or Picture Show, it's n- oh, it's you probably more, already know about this. You, you probably already know, but if you don't, it's more horror, less zany, but the same vibe. Yeah, this I want to say this is like new metal, whereas Rocky Horror is glam rock. Sure, I don't. I don't have a problem with new metal, but boy, does that come up with a very specific <laughs> feel, and I don't know if Repo is that, but... Oh, it's also got the Giles from uh, Buffy. Yep, yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen him in a few other things, but yeah, he's really good. He's I mean, probably the best yeah. part of it, as far as I'm concerned. You're not wrong, you're not wrong, but anyway, so again, hard turn. Uh, so number one, and I will die in this hill, this is the greatest film made this year. It is also a documentary, as you mentioned okay. what yours was, except it's Dear Zachary, A Letter to a Son About a Father. It is singularly the most emotional documentary I've ever seen. It's also the best documentary mm-hmm. I've ever seen. Uh, it's a true crime documentary. Uh, I don't know how to give you the base. A uh, guy is informed that his best friend growing up, who is that guy that everyone loves. Mm-hmm. You know that guy in your town where like, oh, well, that's just Tom. Everybody loves Tommy. Tom is a, he's a joker. He's, thing. He's, he's always just a genuinely nice guy. No one has anything bad to say about him. His best friend is this, this guy. And he finds out he was killed. He was shot. And nobody quite knows what's happening. So he grabs his camera because he's an indie filmmaker. And mm-hmm. he goes, I'm going to, you know, 
make this for him. He then finds out that the guy's estranged girlfriend who's surprising, or ex-girlfriend who they were supposed, like, signs are pointing to something here. Mm. She announces she's pregnant with his baby. She's also the number one suspect in his murder. Mm. She's fled to Canada. And so this guy's going to make this documentary. It starts off as just a way to try to remember his friend. Becomes a way for him to provide a way for his friend's son to meet his father. Mm. And it is a pure pouring out of a person's life in the dealings with the crime. I don't want to say as they happen. He is a, he is a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. He is able to, after the fact, of he's editing stuff. It isn't raw footage or anything. But... I'll put it this way. There, I have never had somebody sit with me or let them watch this that didn't at least acknowledge it was the like an emotional roller coaster. Most people cry. Mm. Like this is an emotional powerhouse of a film. And I'm gonna warn you, it's a it's a documentary, it's true crime. You are going to need a box of tissues. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't have any problem admitting it. This movie made me cry. This is an intensely emotional film. Highly suggest though. Everybody should watch it. All right, so those were our films for 2008. Uh, feel free to leave your su- uh, suggestions or favorites in the comments below. Uh, so until next time, this is Mackenzie Lambert. And John Cleveland. Signing off. Have a good night, folks. Bye.